And so here, when he says, Beware the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by your fruits. We oftentimes default to thinking that that's their outward actions, right? And we'll hear perverse statements like, Well, he said he, said he believed, but I just don't see the fruit right? And by that, we mean they're still sinning in some way that we can see and we think is gross or we judge, we're judgmental over. But that was not at all what Jesus was talking about here, or at least not primarily what Jesus is talking about here, as evidenced by the fact that He already said, they look like sheep. They fit in. They're doing all the externals. What's missing here is their fruit. So, um, you know, uh, we, we, Jesus has already pointed out the natural reality. Grapes don't grow from thorn bushes. A grapevine makes grapes, right? And uh, figs don't grow from thistles. A fig tree makes figs. So what does a prophet make? What is the fruit of a prophet? Their prophecy, their doctrine. He's not telling them that their fruit is going to betray them. In fact, quite to the contrary, their fruit might look like they get, it, it uh, gives credence to their message. Think for a moment at how much effort goes into the, uh, say, any cult specifically, but the, the Mormon church. How much effort goes into making sure they look nice and they're doing good things and they're making sure that every time they do a good thing, everybody knows about it so that people will say, well, they're doing great stuff. They must be, they must be okay. But they're not okay. Their external lives are meaningless because their internal doctrine is flawed. It points away from Christ. They don't believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is co-equal with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. They have a doctrine of demons, and you know what? You'd never know it to look at them. They're doing great things by earthly standards, and it is all dust and ash. It is all dung before the holiness and righteousness of God, because their fruit... Their doctrine is rotten, and good fruit doesn't come from a bad tree. Now, this is even more the case, uh, but we, I want us to really sink in on this, because when we think of the fruit of a person's life, I hope the first thing you think of is what is it that they teach? What is it they proclaim that they believe? What is it that comes forth from them? And then secondarily, how do they live in response to the things that they're saying? In other words, they practice what they preach. But here, the real point is not asking them to, you know, nitpick their lifestyle but rather to recognize that what they're saying, these false prophets that He is telling them are going to come, will be destructive. It'll be ravenous, it will destroy. So someone seems great, they seem spiritual, they seem head and shoulders above the rest, they're so nice, they lead this or that nonprofit, or they feed the hungry or do whatever wonderful thing it seems to be. But their teachings and prophecies are bad. You need to distance from that person. That's difficult for us to do. John would later warn church, uh, the church about false prophets and false teachers, saying, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God abides in Him and He in God, and we have known and believed the love, of God, the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God and God in Him. So, point, the first thing that he's saying about a prophet or a teacher or a spirit that they're discerning is that he has to confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. In other words, the first test is the doctrine. And then the second test follows, right? If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must also love his, bro or must love his brother also. So what is John saying? He's saying someone comes along and their doctrine seems wrong, then immediately throw them out. Their doctrine seems right, but they're, or, or maybe you're wondering if their doctrine is right, but they hate the brethren, they're causing division and strife within the body. Well, then they're, they're, something is off, right? So I want to make sure that we don't uh, misbalance here. Jesus' main focus, as the main focus of the Bible always is, is what you believe is most important. Your doctrine is more important than what the life that it uh, brings or doesn't bring. That doesn't mean that the life that it brings or doesn't bring is unimportant. 
It's deadly important. It's superbly important. But the reality is, is if you get the cart before the horse, you get the works, but not the faith that is right. You have nothing. You have the faith, and then it's not worked its way out properly. You still have something. You have salvation. You have a right relationship and a right understanding of God in the universe. You have hope to get better and grow as God would have you grow. But if you don't have the doctrine, the understanding of what God has said as a starting place, then we're in deep problem or deep troubles. Peter points out the same change for the church age. He says, but there were also false prophets among the people, even there as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. Now, interestingly, Peter is, is uh, probably writing in the mid-60s, right? 60, 66, 67, somewhere in there. Um, and he's telling them, hey, up until now, prophets have been a part of the church. The gift of prophecy was around, but he's telling them, hey, false prophets, you're not going to have to be on the lookout as much for that. Why? Because prophecy was a going away gift. It was a momentary revelation until the completed word of God was given. He says, now instead, you need to look for false teachers, teachers who are not rightly representing the word of God's revealed truth, right? So look out for those false teachers. Someone claims to be a prophet, you know they're false. But if someone claims to be a teacher, then you need to examine them. By what? By their doctrine. 